Hi guys, it's Sherry. I hope that you are having a wonderful day. Y'all, let's do some fun crafting. Stay tuned. So today guys, we are going to do something oh so special and I'm going to bring it in while I talk. And I am going to call this project The Sisterhood of the Traveling Cookbook because this cookbook is designed with love and it is designed to be passed on and passed around. So I have three sisters. With the exception of one, we all have daughters. We all have favorite recipes that we are known for in our family. So I thought it would be a lot of fun if I made four of these, one for each one of the girls in my family, and we all write down our favorite recipes, then we drop it in the mail to the other sisters and they write their favorite recipes in it. And we do that until all sisters have written their favorite recipes in all four books. Then we have something that we can pass on to our daughters. And I just thought it would be a great way to create a family memory, a family tradition. And my daughter has a daughter that she might want to share this with. And my nieces may one day have daughters that they too might want to share this with. So I am going to show you guys exactly what I have created here. And I decided that I wanted to give this a vintage look. And most of you guys probably recognize the look that I'm going for with this, but I thought it would be great just to recreate an old style vintage look, cookbook, recipe book, whatever you want to call it. And what I've done is I have created pockets throughout the book, especially with the recipe cards themselves. So each recipe card is actually a pocket. And then I added 50 sheets of plain paper so that recipes and instructions could be written. Then I added more pockets at the back and then I have this pocket here. And I think this is just so sweet. And of course, I used the new no heat laminating method. And to get that method, we are using chopping mats from the Dollar Tree. So y'all know what time it is? Time to make it. So guys, before we actually start the project, I wanted to make sure that I showed you again what I'm using for the outside cover, what I'm using for that no heat laminating method. I am using chopping mats and I get these from the Dollar Tree, but I understand that they can be found online. So I am just going to hold this right here so that you guys can get that SKU. All right guys, so here's what you're going to need for this project. I am using 50 sheets of just plain copier paper and I have it cut at five and an eighth by seven and three eighths. Then I have a napkin that I got from the Dollar Tree. And here is that pack of napkins. You get 18 in the pack. They have that wonderful vintage look that I wanted. So I am using one napkin. I'll be using some four by four cut aparts in this project. On my project, I'm using three. Then I have a white mat that measures four and a quarter by four and a quarter. I have a black mat that measures four and a half by four and a half. I have four recipe cards that measure four by six. If you don't have recipe cards, you can probably go online, do a search, print and cut. Then I have two pieces of decorative card stock for my inside pockets that measure three by six. I will be using four six by eight pieces of decorative cardstock. And I'll be using two pieces of the chopping mat that I have already cut down to six and a half by eight and a half. And then again, for those of you who need to know what the chopping mat is, I am going to hold it up so that you can do a screen grab of this because they sell them at the Dollar Tree, but I also understand that you can find these online by doing a search. And then I have two pieces of medium weight white cardstock and this measures five and a half by seven and a half. Then I have a piece of 12 by eight 
and I'll be using that for the inside liner of the project. And then I have a coil that I will be using on this project to hold the book together. And we'll talk about this more when we get to this part of the project. All right, guys, I have used my Xyron Creatopia to place my adhesive on the back. You can use whatever adhesive works for you. I would not use tape strips because the tape strips will show, but I would use whatever adhesive on this project you can use to get a nice layer coating, whether that's a spray adhesive, um, adhesive sheets, your Xyron Create a Station. As long as you get like one continuous flow, then your project will look as good as mine. So I am going to take these and remove them from the backer sheet. And then I'm going to bring in my napkin and the napkin is a two ply napkin. So we need to remove that white piece. Don't throw it away because you can of course use it on yet another project. So I am going to spread this out. I'm not even going to worry about ironing it. I am just going to take one of my pieces and lay it down. Then I'll take the other piece and place it down as well. And now I can flip this over. I'll use my big old spatula and I will use it like an iron. It will come in, flatten out my board, but also iron out most of my wrinkles. And if I have a few wrinkles, just like in life, I am okay with that. So just make sure you get everything covered on this. And then once you have it covered, I am just going to tear away the excess. From all of this. And yeah, I am wasting some of the napkin, but that's okay. So I'm sure I'll get a couple comments about, I could have saved the napkin, maybe, but I am not interested in these small pieces. So I am just going to keep going until I get this removed, just like that. Try to get as many of the big pieces off as I can. And then once I have most of the big pieces off, I am just going to use my sanding block, which is basically just a nail file. And I am just going to go around until I have all of that removed. And you do this on both pieces. So you can see that it will come up. You just need to go along those edges and get everything nice and clean. All right guys, so I've cleaned all of these up and I have gone ahead and run it through my Xyron so that I could put my adhesive backing this time on top of the napkin and I am going to peel away very carefully that backer sheet. And we'll be able to get this little cutie put down. And I'm being careful because I want to make sure that I don't pull too fast and cause the sticker to actually pull on that napkin. So there's one. And there's two. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in the two pieces of chopping mat that I cut at six and a half by eight and a half. That'll give me room just to lay that down. And I'll take this one and lay it down as well. And when you place it down, make sure that you're placing it down on top of the shiny side. So now I'll flip this over. I am going to use my big old spatula 
to get everything nice and stuck. I'll do the same thing with this one. And then I'll go on the back side and do it again. And now that I have it mounted, I am going to go ahead, bring in my finger blade, and I am going to trim away the excess chopping mat. And then guys, we are going to have a very beautiful vintage look cover. If you grew up during the time that I grew up, especially in the US, I think everyone had a cookbook that had this particular looking cover on the front. So yep, I'm dating myself. And we're just going to remove this. And now that we have one done, I'll go ahead and cut out the other one and be right back. All right, guys, we have our two covers nicely covered. And I have to say, again, I love how this looks. So I have my 12 by eight inside liner piece. I have run it through my machine to get my adhesive backing. Again, use whatever adhesive you have access to, even if it's an, an adhesive spray, I simply would not use glue and I would not use um, tape strips on this. So what I'm going to do is take this with the white side and just place it down. And this is how I'll get my inside liner. So I'm gonna place that down just like that. I'll flip this over and now I have a beautiful inside liner that I can very easily just come back and trim out. All right guys, so we have our front and back lined beautifully and now we are going to work on the inside of this book. So the first thing that we're going to do, we're going to take our four pieces that measure six by eight, and we're simply going to fold those in half. I have already done two off camera, so I will do two with you guys. So just fold it in half and score. And then I'll open it up. I'm going to bring in my glue and I'll place glue on one end of this, just like that. And then I'll close it and use my big old spatula to seal it. And let's do the other one. So I am just going to take my glue Place glue on one side, just like this. So I have my no glue on the bottom. I just have my glue here going down the two sides. We'll fold. And then we will burnish this. To get it stuck. Now we have these two pockets. On top of the pockets, and here are the two that I've already done. On top of the pockets, we're simply going to lay down our recipe cards. So I am going to bring in my two recipe cards, and I will also bring in my tape runner because I'm going to place these down with my tape runner. And I am simply going to run some tape we can place this down. And I'm just putting a decent little coating of tape on here because I want to make sure that it sticks. And when I place it down, I'm sticking my finger inside just to make sure that I'm placing it facing the right direction. So really, I just wanna get this placed down just like that. So there's number three and let's do 
the fourth one. So I'm going to take my tape runner and I will just place tape all over this. I could have run this through my Xyron. Don't know why I didn't, wasn't even thinking about it. And then I'll open it up just like that to make sure I'm on the right end so that when I place this down, I have everything going in the right direction. And we now have pocket number four. So we have our four pockets that I am going to set to the side. We have our book jacket, and now we need to make the inside pockets for these. So I am going to bring in my two pieces that measure three by six. I am going to take these pockets. So I am actually going to trim my pockets down to about three by five and a half. And that's a good fit. So I am going to take my glue, place glue here, place glue here. So I'm placing glue on the two short sides and then I'll place glue on one long side. And I'll put this down at the bottom. And I know it's the bottom because my words are going in the right direction. So I will get this nice and stuck. I'll flip this one over, make sure my words are going in the right direction. We'll take our glue, place our glue on the two short sides and then place our glue on one long side. Then I can take this pocket, place it down here at the bottom. All right guys, so now that we have our pockets on the inside of our book, it's now time to place our holes for the coil. Now I am going to use my cinch for this, but if you don't have a cinch on my website, I will have a template that will have all of the holes already pre-punched. And that way you can take that template, lay it down, and you can have the same spacing that I will have on this project. For those of you who do have a cinch or are thinking about getting a cinch, it's a wonderful machine to have. I have had this one since they first came out. Um, they have made newer models since then, but this one still works well for me. So I have no need to change it. So this is made by We Are Memory Keepers and it is the cinch. And basically what I'll be doing is I have 12 pegs and I'm going to have all 12 pegs pulled in because I want 12 holes. If you don't want a hole in a particular spot, all you do is pull the peg out and you can see how this peg is extended right there. That means that if I punch, there wouldn't be a hole in the number eight position because I had that peg pulled out. But because I have all of my pegs pulled in, that means that I am going to have 12 holes punched. So the way that I'm going to do this is I know that my board is seven and a half inches long. I have a seven inch ruler right here on the bottom and then I have an additional set of grids here on the top all the way to 13. This is seven inches so I know I need seven and a half inches because I want it to be centered top and bottom. So I am simply going to take that seven and slide it over to Here's the 13, but you've got that half mark. So if I take the seven and slide it over to that half mark, then I am now punching dead center on a seven and a half inch piece of anything. And you'll see the word center right there. So when I place my board in, and I'll go ahead and place it in so you guys can see it. When I place my board in, that means that because I set my spacing properly, I am going to have punching dead center on this board. So, so now I'm going to show you guys exactly how we need to punch. And I'm gonna slide this back just a little bit. Try to get that out of the camera. So when we are punching, we need to make sure that we have our boards 
facing each other. That's going to be very important. So whatever is your front, whatever is your back, you need to make sure that you have it facing. So I am going to go ahead and place this one in. And all I have to do is pull down my handle. And you can see that I have got my spacing on my board. And now I'm going to take the piece that's facing up just slide it in and now I have my holes that are ready for my coils when I'm ready to put them in but before we can put the coil in we've got to punch some holes for the paper and what I like about the cinch is it will punch up to 25 sheets of regular copier weight paper at a time so my paper is seven and three eighths inches long. I had this set at seven and a half. Now I need to slide it this way so that I can have it set at seven and three eighths. So I am going to take my paper, put it in and pull. And I'll keep doing this until I have all sheets of my paper punched. All right, guys, so I have all of my pages punched. I have my board punched. And now I need to punch holes in these pockets because they are going to sit on the inside and be grabbed by um, my coil as well. So these are six inches, and this doesn't come into six inches. So basically all I'm doing is placing it in and lining it up by sight so that I can get my hole punched. And what I'm looking for is all 12 holes, but I want to make sure that I have border here, and I do. So I'm going to do all of these. And so now I have holes in all of my pockets. I have holes in my book jacket and I have holes in my paper. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my cinch and turn it to the side so that you guys can see this. This is just a guide that we can take our coils and lay them down so that we can place everything down. Now, with these coils, I'll have a link in the description box when you're using this size coil, you don't need a machine to press it together. I am going to hand bend these so you guys can see that if you're making something this size, you can definitely use coils just like what I'm using on this project. And I will say this, I don't use a lot of machines that I have on the channel because I want to really show how to do things mostly machine free, but there are some things in my craft room that I absolutely love having and this is one of them because I make a lot of books and it makes it so easy for me to bind those books without having to do it all by hand. So for me, this was definitely a wonderful investment and has paid for itself many, 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 many times over. So I am going to show you guys exactly how we do this. I am going to take two of my little um, pockets because they're going to be at the back of my book. So I am just going to take these and place them down. Then I'm going to take my papers and get these placed down just like that. And the size coil that you're using will basically determine how many papers you're able to get in your book. So I have those down. And then once I get to this point, I'm just going to take it off of the grid and I'll place down my final two pockets. And now we'll place down our covers. And guys, the way that you do this, you take your front cover, which will be the front of your book, and you place it down so that it is face down. 
Then you take your back cover and it is face up and you place it down just like that. And you make sure that you've got it placed, you've got that back cover on top placed face up. And then all you need to do is really just start closing these. And because I'm using such a small wire, closing is very easy. When you're using the larger wires, that's when you definitely want to close it with the machine so that you can get that great roundness that the machine will give you. But this works. So all I need to do now is take that piece, flip it to the back, and you can see that we have a wonderful, wonderful book. We've got our pockets in, we have our pages, we have so many awesome things that we can do with this. So I am going to take this and we're going to do some very, very light decorating. Not a whole lot. So I have these little stickers. So I'm going to take the one that says Homestead and just place it right there. So then I'm going to take these little flags at the top that say home and I am just going to spell out home. I'm gonna to try to spell it in the same manner that they did. They didn't actually have them side by side and that's the look that I actually like. And I might not have it as straight, but it's going to be fine. And then I have this little heart that I am going to place right there. So we have got the inside of our book decorated in a way that I want. So now guys, we are going to go ahead and just do some decorating to the outside. So I am going to use this one as my cover and I'm using a four by four cut apart. And I am going to lay down some tape And I'm going to place this down on a four and a quarter by four and a quarter inch piece of white cardstock. And then I'll add some tape to the back of this. And I'm going to take this and mount it to a piece of four and a half by four and a half inch cardstock, just to give me a nice border. And now I'm going to take my tape, place it on this piece, and now I can take this and just decide where or how I want it on my book. So I think I'm gonna go with this look here. We've got it down. I will take my big old spatula and just smooth that out. And then the final thing that I'm going to do is I am just going to come back and round my edges. And I'm rounding my edges last because I laid down those pockets and I really didn't want to have to try to match that up. So I am just going to use my scissors to do a slight rounding. And then I'll do the same thing at the back of the book, just a very slight rounding. And then I'll come up to the top and do it again. And there we have our second sisterhood of the traveling cookbook project i absolutely love these and the napkins just really take me back to that book and you guys know the one i'm talking about and i think this is just so stinking cute so what i want to do here is i am just going to tuck in just a couple of my little cut aparts 
just to give this book some additional cuteness. And you can go through and add so many different things to this if you want it. But this is just such an awesome way to make a sweet little gift, whether you're making it to start a tradition or you're making it as a gift. I love this idea and I think that you will too. So guys, I hope that you have liked this project. And if you have, please hit the like button. If you are not a subscriber to my channel, I would love to have you join. Guys, y'all have a great day. Happy crafting and we'll chat later. Bye.